Hey guys! So, I've had so many video requests on Instagram and Tumblr and in my YouTube comments and all of them have told me many many times that you guys want me to do a morning routine video and I think that that's like such a cool idea because I know that morning routine videos are super popular on YouTube and honestly like I wanted to film a morning routine video I think that's like a really cool idea because morning routines are really popular on YouTube but I really decided that I think it would be way more fun if I did a morning routine kind of just talking through it with you guys and so I'm going to just kind of like walk you guys through what I do in my morning like before school and then like my mornings on the weekends and you know you guys can tell me like kind of what you guys do as well and um, yeah so like I just thought I would kind of like write it down and walk it through on like this little cute notepad for those of you guys who don't know where this is from it's from bloom daily planners and they have like the cutest notepads ever i absolutely love it oh rebecca's asking if i'm having a good morning and yes i am last night was homecoming so i had a ton of fun and i like just had so much fun and really had a blast so this morning is a really good morning and i'm really excited that i'm like live streaming with you guys and so anyways, this notepad is from Bloom Daily Planners, and I don't know, I think I'm going to use this, like, Muji .38 gel ink pen. This is the purple one, and honestly, I think the purple one is my favorite, not just because purple is my favorite color, but it's, like, a really nice, like, bluish purple. But um, basically, I the first thing I do... In the mornings, I'm just gonna write morning routine. And the first thing I do in the morning is wake up. And I wake up around 7 a.m. every morning for school. Like, when do you guys wake up? Because I know that, like, in my how to be a morning person uh, video, a ton of you guys were telling me about how like you wake up at like 4 30 in the morning because you have to commute to school and that you have to wake up at like six or like five and that's like I can't even like imagine having to wake up so early I feel like I'd have to go to bed super early to like be able to get enough sleep for that but yeah so I wake up at around 7 a.m and I try really hard to get enough sleep so I go to bed like usually around like 11 30 ish and that's enough sleep for me especially on the like school days and everything and so yeah so I wake up at 7 a.m. and then after that I go and I immediately get up and brush my teeth and after I do that I go and I change into whatever clothes I am wearing for the day honestly I don't do a lot of like studying or like school things in the morning really because I um I don't know I just wake up on a pretty like tight schedule like I mean I have like an hour ish to get ready and stuff so that's like fine but I don't really like study in the mornings unless if I have like a big exam and I want to make sure I get things done so yeah so I just like change clothes and after I do that I finish packing my backpack and I try really hard to kind of like pack my bag the night before because um, that way I have less to do in the morning and I have less to think about when I'm getting ready super early in the morning. But if I have like a notebook out or like a couple of folders that I forgot to put in my bag, I make sure I just quickly like check over that I have everything that I need for the day because I hate being like a, that person that like forgets to bring like my folder for my, you know, psychology class when I'm in psychology. So I like to make sure I have everything. So I always make sure I pack my backpack and double check things and all that. And, um... Ooh, someone's asking what I usually have for breakfast. So actually, like, after I finish packing my bag, I go and eat breakfast downstairs. Honestly, I don't really eat, like, a whole huge breakfast or anything. And I know that breakfast is the most important part of the day. 
So I, you know, I always make sure I eat something before I leave. Usually I just eat like a banana and then sometimes like yogurt and like, or like a toast or like avocado toast is amazing. Um, so I usually will just eat something really quickly and then head off to school. Sometimes I'll like bring with me like a little carton of orange juice or like iced coffee or something, depending on how tired I am. So, um, yeah, so that, that's basically what I normally eat for breakfast. And honestly, um, after I do that, I really just kind of, you know, double check everything again. I'll like check things on my phone and usually I like just scroll through Instagram and I like just sometimes I'll like update my Snapchat story. I try to be really active on there, but I've been super busy, so I try my best. And then I basically just head out the door and then I'm done. So that's really my morning routine for school days. It's not super, super different than what most of you guys do, I think. Um, but, oh, someone's asking what time I go to sleep. I go to sleep at around, like, 11.30 p.m., like I said earlier, but on weekends, sometimes I'll go to bed a little bit later. Uh, Poison Levy, Levy is asking what phone I use. I have an iPhone 6S, and, um... Oh, a couple of you guys are asking how many hours a week I study. I don't really have like a specific routine per week of when I study or how long I study for because it depends so much on the classes that I am currently in because sometimes my teachers will assign us like a ton of homework and I have to spend a lot of time studying and sometimes I just don't have as much. So it's really, really dependent on what my teachers give us. But, um, I don't know. My favorite study snacks, as asked by a bunch of people, are mostly, like, like popcorn is really good because I feel like it's sort of healthy, but I can still, um, you know, eat some and it's, like, salty, so I just, you know, continually get some good stuff from there. Okay, so... I don't know. I did a video on my after school routine and I know that a lot of you were really, really excited about that and wanted to see more of like what I did for like my night routine. And so I thought I would just kind of do the same thing I did with my morning routine and just kind of talk you guys through like what I do. So if you're like curious about how I structure my nights, then this is kind of how I do it. So um, like I said in my after school routine, the first thing I do when I get home is do my homework like after I've like showered and eat and I've like had dinner and all that so I first just try to do my homework and I get as much done as I need to because honestly like okay so you guys have seen my planner before but this really really actually saves me it's my Hobonichi cousin for those of you who don't already know but basically like I write down everything that I have to get done for a day and normally like I write down like actually everything that I would be happy with completing that day and I really try to like decide what I need to get done based on like what's due like the next day and the day after that and so I really try to like divide out and not overwork myself so like you see here I've like migrated a couple of things over to the next day and I definitely try not to overwork myself. So when I'm studying at night, I really try to just do the things that make sense for me to finish because I don't want to be like studying until like one in the morning because I think that getting more sleep is so much more beneficial than just studying until like way late at night like I don't know do you guys stay up really late to study because I know that some people really spend their most productive hours at night and aren't really morning people and so they feel like they work better late at night and that they don't really like study well like in the afternoon or the evening so I don't know just for me personally like I, I'm not a great like night person I used to be but I think that ever since I started appreciating early mornings I'm less of 
like, a night person, I guess you'd say. But, um, yeah, so the first thing I did was homework, so I'm just going to write that down. And I also, I'm going to put in parentheses, dinner and shower. And so I do my homework for, like, a really long time sometimes. Like, if I have a lot going on, sometimes I'll just do it for, like, three or four hours. And so I'll usually be done at around, I don't know, usually around, like, 10 or 10.30 um, hopefully, sometimes it's a little bit later if I, like, have just a lot of work or I've, like, taken a lot of breaks and stuff like that, but after I've finished as much homework as, that, like, I need to for the day, then I go ahead and I, like, I change into pajamas if I haven't already, but normally I try to be as comfortable as possible when I'm doing my homework just because, um... I think that it just makes it more comfortable and you don't have to worry as much about like getting comfortable if you're wearing whatever you wore to school that day. Um, yeah, so after I change, I then uh, eat a snack usually because I am such a snack person. I don't know, do you guys like to have like late night snacks or anything? Because I find that if I have like, I don't know, like some milk or like dessert or something like that like a little bit after dinner like I just like it just works so much better for me and I also find that it's like it's almost like an, like a reward after I've like finished all my homework like if I've done all my work I can go ahead and eat some like cookies or something like that but I basically just do that and then I brush my teeth and normally at this point I've like already practiced my instrument and stuff so I've like brushed before that as well but after I brush my teeth, I go ahead and I get into bed or I sit like around on like the sofa or something and I'll like just check social media. I'll like answer questions on Tumblr. You guys have like seen me constantly trying to answer questions. I get so many messages from you all on Tumblr. So I spend a lot of time trying to like catch up with that and I'll like maybe post a photo on Instagram and like answer some like comments on Instagram and stuff like that. And then I'll just go to sleep right as soon as I start getting, like, sleepy. And I find that it's, like, I get into bed, but I won't go to sleep until, like, maybe 20 minutes after that. I don't know. Does anyone else feel the same way? Because I think that, I don't know, I just, like, can't fall asleep right away unless if I've had, like, a super exhausting day. Um, but yeah, that's basically how my like nights look. So I just wanted to like let you guys know about like my morning routine and my night routine just because so many of you have asked me about it and I just kind of wanted to like talk about it because I, fe I felt like I didn't want to like do a video on it just because, you know, I think a lot of it is stuff that you guys would do normally anyways. Um, so some people are asking if I got a grade for The Secret History, and I did. So as a lot of you know, I did read The Secret History for an assignment for my AP Literature class, and I basically just go ahead and, like, we annotated through the whole book, and then we had a bunch of, like, class discussions, and I did really well on that, and then we had an in-class essay, which I did really well on as well, so that was good. Um, oh, have I ever considered a ring binder for my planner? So actually, this is something that I considered for a really long time. You guys know that I mostly use my Hobonichi, but I also have this little personal planner. And this little personal planner is the square size, and it's super cute and small. And I use this for all of my, like, social media-related plans. And so this one, as you guys can see, is spiral bound. And my main planner that I use for like really everything else is not spiral bound either, but it's also not a binder. It's just like, I guess, just like a normal like notebook. But um, I thought about getting a ring binder when I was deciding whether or not to get a Hobonichi or not. I was trying to decide if I should get a ring binder. Um, like a Filofax or whatever because I thought those are so cute and I've seen a ton of them on Instagram but I decided that that wouldn't work very well for me because a lot of the little binder planners they have to like 
um, make your own like inserts because they're like smaller than a normal sheet of paper. So I don't know. I think that the binder system works well for some people. It wouldn't work very well for me because I wanted to make sure that I really could use my planner to the fullest and actually plan out my days and not really plan out like how to use my planner and put in like inserts and things like that. Um, let's see. Did I make that cover myself? Like for this personal planner, I actually didn't. So it's really cool because personal planner is this like website online and basically you get to customize your your whole like entire planner and I did a video about this reviewing it and I really really like it because the website's pretty easy to use and you can use whatever you want as your image for the front so you could put like like a collage of like pictures of your friends or like pictures from tumblr or like your favorite band or whatever you'd like to put on the front i decided to go ahead and just put my little logo because i thought it was really cute and it was relevant to what this planner is about but yeah so they kind of make everything for you and you just decide the options that you wanted and someone else is asking how to study for ap lang and comp i actually didn't take that class so i can't really give you any advice but if anyone else has taken that class and you know, has some advice that they want to share, definitely do that in the live chat just to help out that one person. But, um, oh, okay, so someone says that they got Pilot Juice Pens, but they regret buying them because the ink runs out really fast. So, I don't know, like, I think, like, so a lot of you guys already know that Pilot Juice Pens are, like, my favorites. I really, really do like these a lot because they're really consistent and I never have them skip or bleed ever and these are like the point thirty eight versions but I haven't really found that they run out of ink that quickly compared to other pens just because I don't know I, I do try to switch these out with other pens so I don't use like a bunch of them at once since I do have like several different types like I have my Muji ones and the other pilot ones and stuff like that but um, these ones I don't know I haven't noticed that they run out of ink fast I don't know has anyone else had that problem because like I used these like during like my AP exams like for the essay portion you're allowed to use like a dark blue or black ink for like essays in the free response sections and I don't know I haven't really noticed even after using it like for those long essays and stuff that like these ran, ran out of ink any quicker than like normal pens so you know that's always I guess something to keep in mind so um oh someone's asking what other pens okay so I also have these like jelly roll ones that I don't really use for normal writing. I use these like m mainly for like my planner and stuff like that. And then I have this cute little jar. And uh, by the way, I like love using little jars to keep my stuff in just because you can like see everything and it's clear and all that. But I use the Muji ones and those are point thirty eight. And then these, which are the Pilot High Tech Mica ones. These ones are kind of scratchy, but I still like them and the Pilot Friction ones that are erasable and I don't know I have a bunch of like fine liners and stuff but honestly I haven't really been using fine liners as much lately I don't know I know a lot of people still really 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 like fine liners but I find that they just last for such little time compared to like other pens and stuff like that oh Sarah's asking how to improve your math grade Basically, um, I did a whole video about this with like how to um, study for math and I think I gave like seven or eight like tips and advice on like how I've personally like figured out how to study for, um, for math and all of that. So I think that if you follow those tips, you should see a difference in your work. Um, Okay, a lot of people are asking about study apps. So I was actually planning on doing a video on that really soon because I think that doing, um, like using your apps on your phone and on your computer and stuff is actually super, super useful because basically like you have it available to you anyways. Like if you use your phone often, it makes sense that you would use it for like for studying, especially if you're like a student anyways and that's something that you spend your time like working towards but like study apps that I really like are usually related to time management and I really like ones like clear and 
um, Forest and stuff. Like I've already talked about all the main ones that I use for time management in like my time management video. But I really, really like those. And um, oh, study tips for economics I talked about in my study with me economics video. And I basically had a bunch of methods that I used when I was studying specifically for econ. I, you know, did summary foldables, which I've, like, shown you guys before, where I just, like, fold a piece of paper over, and I have, like, a type of, like, flashcards. And, um, any, oh, Rowan is asking, any tips on getting rid of distractions while studying? So, definitely, I find that, like, the thing that distracts me the most while I'm studying is definitely my phone, my computer, and, like, any other electronics, like the TV and things like that. And so if I get rid of those three things, I find that that gets rid of most of my distractions. And so I, you know, would usually like close my laptop if I have it near me and I turn off the TV if it's near me. And then I will put my phone either on airplane mode or do not disturb or use like a Pomodoro timer or something like that just to really make sure that I don't touch my phone while I study. And when I do that, I think it's just really, really helpful for me to get rid of all my distractions like that because I don't really get distracted by many other things than those. Um, Flora is asking do I color code? Yes, but I don't really color code like in my notes as much. I usually just use color to really differentiate between like topics and subtopics and things like that. But you guys have seen before in like my monthly spreads in my planner, I basically use five different colors including black which I use for all of my school related things like homework and things like that and I color code in my planner itself with like um, blue for like personal pink for health yellow for social media green for band and black for homework and assignments so that's basically the only color code that I consistently use I actually also color code in my annotations and so I'm actually reading Jane Eyre right now for English class and so I actually color code using highlighters in this so I let's see here we go so I use usually like four to five highlighter colors oh there we go and I use yellow for important like plot points and I use green for like character development or like new information about the characters and then pink for like figurative devices and then I use blue for any like thematic ideas and so I try to keep that pretty consistent too but that's really like the only other place that I normally will like color code or anything like that. Alessandra is asking how many classes I take. Normally I take around seven classes per year and that's usually like the standard for people at my school so I know it depends a lot on like what type of school you attend and all that um how do I study chemistry I took chemistry last year and I did a lot of like flashcards and summary foldables to really make sure that I memorized all of like the different like element symbols and other things like that that I had to remember for class and like the element symbols and things like that. So that's what I did and then um, I don't know I think that really did everything that I needed to for my like chemistry class. Oh, a couple of you guys are asking right now about if I still use my bullet journal and the answer is yes I do. Um, I use this little Muji notebook and it's really like it's really really nice because it's super thin like I think there are only let's see I think like 80 pages in this whole notebook so it's really really thin and it's not heavy at all and I really appreciate that because my moleskin that I used before this was super thick and heavy and it was a hard hardish like cover and so it just like added a lot of weight but this is like paperback and really really thin so I love that and I still use this bullet journal a lot. I usually use it to set like my monthly goals like I did here for October. And I did this spread in my October plan with me video. And I also just use it for like random like um, 
like spreads about like this was for my AP government class just like a checklist of all the things I needed to study and things like that so I do use my bullet journal and I'm really happy with it but I regularly use my planner and then my bullet journal is just like a supplement to that um yeah so I'm pretty happy with this bullet journal and I still use it regularly but just not as regularly as my planner because that's where I write down the bulk of like my tasks and things like that. Um, oh, someone's asking if I've ever tried Quizlet because it's really great for flashcards. I totally agree. I use Quizlet for all of like my foreign language classes, so all of my Spanish classes ever. And um, actually, yeah, Zara's asking if I know Spanish, and I do. I take Spanish at school, and I'm currently in AP Spanish, which is the highest level of Spanish that my school offers. I don't know, do you guys take languages as well? Because some schools I know offer, like, a ton of different foreign language, but I personally, like, um, my school only offers, like, a couple of foreign languages, so it isn't, like as big as it is at some schools, but I have a couple of friends that live, like, in other, like, counties at, in, like, other schools and stuff, and they take other languages, like, Italian and, like, Japanese, and, like, some people actually take, like, American Sign Language, which I think is super cool, and I have always kind of wanted to learn sign language because I think it'd be so cool to, like, be able to communicate without speaking, but, yeah, I know that a ton of people take French. Yeah, it looks like a lot of you in the live chat have taken a lot of French and, like, German and Spanish. Those are all, like, I think pretty typical to be offered at schools for, like, foreign language. I don't know. But I think that, like, the best way to study for a foreign language is, like, really focused on, like, vocab and grammar. Like, those two things, I think, are really, really, really good to really focus on for a foreign language class, at least in my experience. And if I've done a ton of like uh, vocab and because I have like regular vocab quizzes in my Spanish class. And so if I spend time and I work on basically like just memorizing all the vocab I need to, then I'm usually set for the vocab quizzes. And that's usually what my grade is uh, spent like on, I guess. Um, yeah, so like, oh, so if you take sign language, I guess you can also, I don't know how exactly you'd study for that. I think that you would probably maybe do a lot of like partner work and like study together and like make the signs and kind of try to communicate that way. Um, how old am I? Asks Jessica. I am 17 right now. And, um, oh, look, some other people take AP Spanish too. Awesome. Um, Jasmine is asking for tips before an exam. So that's pretty general, and I think it really just depends on the type of class that you are currently in. Because like I said, like I would study for foreign language in a completely different way than I would study for something like math or government or even like an English class because all, like every exam is just so different. But um, generally, I would prepare for like a big exam about a week in advance and just do a little bit of work every single day so then I don't have to um, like cram the night before because I think that isn't as effective as spacing out all of the things that you have to study for. So yeah, that's what I would say for just an exam in general. Um, oh, someone's asking, how do I relax on the weekend? So it is currently the weekend. It's Sunday morning for me. And I really, I'm just like any other normal like teenage girl. I like to spend time with my friends and like go out to dinner and hang out. I'm in marching band. So typically on Saturdays, I have marching band competitions that I go to. And of course, I have to do all of my homework usually on Saturdays or Sundays, depending on like when I have my other things I have going for the weekend. So I do spend... A lot of time with my friends when I can and then I'm also working on like college apps and stuff over the weekend but to relax I like to spend time with my friends and I also use a lot of my time like for social media things so it's like super relaxing for me to like spend time on Instagram and scrolling through my feed there and then like on Tumblr and Snapchat and stuff it's a lot of fun um, oh Lila's asking for a book that influenced me Honestly, I don't really know. I don't have, like, a specific book that has, like, changed my life or anything. 
like off the top of my head I can't really think of one but books that have like stuck with me and I like had me thinking a lot when I was reading them and right after I'd read them were things like 1984 and uh, Lord of the Flies and definitely The Secret History and The Goldfinch but um, not much else from what I can remember. Um, Maria's asking, are you going to law school? No, I am not. I am not planning to do anything really with law at all, but I am planning to go to an undergraduate university and then after that maybe go to medical school or graduate school. I'm not really sure yet. Um, ooh, a ton of you guys are asking for PSAT tips. I really don't have any advice for the PSAT because I am not going to be taking it this year and I really just don't have any experience with the new like SAT format. So I really can't give any advice, but if you guys have advice and you have like tips and stuff, definitely leave it in the live chat below to help the people that are taking the PSAT this year because I'm sure that'd be really helpful for them, but I personally just can't give any advice or tips on it. Um, let's see. Do I procrastinate? Asks Iva. Um, I really try to avoid it as much as possible, like I've said in most of my videos, but I, you know, we all kind of have our moments, and like the other day I was like, all I had to do was like my math homework, and I tried really hard to like get myself motivated to do it, but I just like couldn't do it, so I just did it like the next morning, and I still turned it in in time, and there was like no problem with it, but um, I don't know, I think we all have our moments when we like just don't really want to do something and you just kind of put it off a little bit but as long as you get it done I think it's good and that's always important um, someone's asking for ACT tips and I did take the ACT and I did pretty well on it and I actually made an entire video with tips for the ACT so it's really like I guess it would be really helpful if you went ahead and like watched that video after this live stream is finished because that has like all of my tips basically it's just to really like know what you're up against and to study in advance and just do as much practice as you can and let's see how do I manage school and personal life so basically like I mean, as you guys can probably tell, because my channel and all of my other social media things are very, like, study-focused, that school is kind of my priority because, you know, I just really have this mindset that I really want to, you know, achieve everything that I want to in life. And I think that doing well in school is one thing that won't get in the way of you doing well. It's only going to help you do well in the future. So I really, really try to like focus my energy on my schoolwork and making sure I'm doing well there first. So like if I have homework due the next day, I will do that before I go out with my friends or like waste time watching TV or, and things like that. But I balance my personal life and school life by basically just doing my schoolwork first and I really just like plan ahead and like work ahead as much as I can and then anytime that like some plans come up and someone's like, hey, let's go to Starbucks or like let's go, you know, here and like hang out or watch a movie or come over, blah, 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 then like I'll put that in my planner and then I'll just plan around that and I just like will, um, I guess like do my work like beforehand and then do it afterhand like without worrying about like my schoolwork while I'm hanging out with my friends. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, these polar bear post-it notes are actually so adorable. Someone just talked about that in the live chat. These are from Flying Tiger and they were, I think they were like three or four dollars like for both of these, I think. So they were like super cute and I really like them. I use them in my planner all the time. And uh, how did I decide to take AP classes? So, um, for those who don't know, AP classes are advanced placement, and um, those are really heavily encouraged at my school. Like, people are really, like, 
uh, they aren't required to take them, but a lot of them are available to us, and people really try to encourage that we take at least some before we graduate. So I just decided to take them based on like the subjects they were offered in and the types of courses that I was kind of interested in learning more about. And so, like, I really decided to do my AP classes based on, like, my interests. Like, I decided to take AP Psychology and AP Biology because those are two subjects that I was super interested in. As many of you guys know, I want to, like, major in neuroscience. So that's something that takes both psychology and biology into account. So I decided to take AP classes for both of those subjects. So I think if you try to take AP classes in places that like you're interested in, it'll help you be more successful in the class because you want to kind of learn more about it. And it's really interesting to you, so you won't have to worry about like studying as much. And, um, oh, Nora's asking if I can make a video talking about motivation. I actually already did that on my channel. So after this live stream finishes, definitely check that out. It's called How to Get Motivated. And the thumbnail's like purple with like a little cloud and sun on it. And that video really gives you all of my tips on getting motivated and how I personally get motivated. Um, how to write faster. I think that being able to like handwrite really quickly only comes from like practice and being able to um, do it as many times as you can. And I think that something like that works well for me is like whenever we're like doing in-class essays, um, for my AP Lit class, which we do pretty often, that's when I have to, um, that's when I have to, like, oh, I forgot what I was saying. That's when I, for, uh, oh, I forgot what I was saying. Never mind. Um, tips on reducing an anxiety. So, um, like anyone else, I do get stressed out over school sometimes. I think that it's just because it's a lot of work and, it's really about like how much pressure you decide to put on yourself. I really like to do well and I try my best to do as well as I can in all of my classes. And so I think that if you try to take on a different mindset about like how maybe school doesn't matter as much as you think it will because this year I've tried to kind of take a different approach where I'm just like I will do as well as I can and that's all I really can do and I think that's that kind of mindset is way more healthier to have and I think that if you just try to like slowly adjust how you think about things that'll definitely reduce your like stress anxiety about school um do you have any other memorization tips other than mnemonics Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Memorization is really, really, really important, obviously, to like a ton of classes. And I think that the first thing that I would recommend doing is to figure out how to put the information you need to memorize in a bunch of different ways. So like I, for example, would be studying like my vocabulary for like my AP government class. So I put them in my little like vocab spiral notebook and then sometimes I'll make a summary foldable of all the ones that I maybe don't remember as well. And then on top of that, I use, I'll use like Quizlet and then I will also go through my textbook in their supplemental materials. And so right there, I have like four different ways to study that same list of vocab. And I think that just having the information in a ton of different ways is so useful when memorizing. And I would definitely recommend doing something like that. You could also just like record yourself talking about a topic and then listen back to it. There's like all sorts of different methods for that. So that's something I would definitely recommend doing. And um, let's see, oh, how to make a study foldable. So actually, I can show you guys real quick. So you basically take out a sheet of paper, and let me see, I can just use this right now. And so you take out a sheet of paper, and then you fold it in half. And I usually like to do it vertical, like vertically. Some people call this like hot dog style. And so after that, you unfold it real quick, and then I take out a pen. It doesn't really matter what type of pen you use or anything. But like suppose I'm trying to remember, I don't know, like the author of Jane Eyre. So I'd write down on one side of the piece of paper, I'd write like Jane Eyre, just like the title. And I'm like trying to remember what the author is. So I'd write down like Charlotte Bronte. 
on the other side of that fold and basically you can use this like summary foldable by folding it back over and that way you just look at half of the information here's like it just says Jane Eyre and I'd have to think about it like okay well what's the author's name and I could be like okay well the last name is Bronte and so that means it's like Charlotte Bronte so then I would unfold it to check my work and if I'm right then I can just move on to the next term and I find that this is just such a, it's basically the same concept as flashcards. It's just slightly different because you just need one sheet of paper instead of like a ton of index cards that end up taking a lot of space in like your backpack and are really easy to lose and stuff. So this just saves like time with like making it and things like that. So that's kind of like a quick example of how I like make a summary foldable. But I don't know, like, is there any other way that you guys study vocab? Because this is a method that works really, really well for me. And I also, like, in addition to doing these summary foldables, I will use, like, normal flashcards if I need to, like, do diagrams or anything like that for science classes. But I know that a ton of people use Quizlet and, like, Flashcards Plus and really, like, all sorts of apps that do, like, virtual flashcards as well. But, um... Yeah, like, I think that just doing different ways of, like, memorizing vocab, it's really, really useful, and that'll help you in a ton of classes. Um, What's your color coding system for foldables, asks Eliana. Um, basically, I don't really have, like, a color coding method, but I'll just show you guys real quick. So, like, usually I'll use two to three different colors. So, and usually I try to use, like, the same pen just so it's, like, it's kind of uniform throughout. But suppose I wanted to remember, like, the author for the Harry Potter series. So I'll write, like, Harry Potter series underneath. And then, obviously, the author is J.K. Rowling. And so... That way I just, I use alternating colors like this. So like my next word would be in green again, and then I would alternate it with pink and then green, green, pink, green, pink, green, pink, etc. And this works well for me because it's not exactly a color code because I use different colors every time I make a foldable. But when I flip over and like I fold this and I'm asking myself about like the author of the Harry Potter series, then I unfold it and I see that the Harry Potter series is in pink and when I unfold it, the author for that book series is also in pink. So it's it's kind of a way to separate the information out without like drawing a line separating each and everything. So that's just kind of how I color code those. Um, ooh, I've seen like a ton of people asking like what clubs I do. So I don't really do a whole lot of clubs, but I do do a lot of band and things like that. So that's sort of where most of my extracurriculars come from. Oh, okay, so Blur is asking about the Pilot Friction erasable pens versus the Pilot Juice pens. I definitely prefer the Pilot Juice pens over those. The Pilot Friction ones are a little bit inconsistent, like especially the slim versions, which are like 0.38. These ones are 0.5 and are a little bit better because the ink actually like works and it's like a pretty smooth pen but the slim versions aren't something I would recommend at all they do erase which is nice but the pen itself isn't great um, is it okay if I start a bullet journal now I really want one but it is October yes absolutely I know that a ton of people aren't sure about starting a bullet journal if it's not like uh, so like September for like the start of the school year or like January because it's the start of the new year like I personally, like, I started this bullet journal, which is the one that I currently use. I started this one in November, no, I started this one in July. So, um, I did this in, like, my how to start a bullet journal video, but you can start a bullet journal whenever you'd like to. You don't have to wait for, like, a specific time to start one just because it's, like, a super, super flexible planner and you can use that, like, whenever you choose to. Um... Sarah's asking how I edit my photos. Honestly, like, I only edit my Instagram photos, and I only use, like, the Instagram app itself. I don't use any other apps, but if you guys have any suggestions for apps I should check out, definitely let me know. I know a ton of people use, like, VSCO, like, Visco or whatever. Um, I haven't really checked it out, but I think that, you know, like, if you find an app that works well for you, then that's awesome. But, um, yeah, so let me see... Tips for studying physics. 
I'm in physics right now, and the way I study for it is really similar to how I study for my math classes. And I really try to work on like just practice problems because that's what most of my tests consist of. And so I really just do like practice problems and then I like practice with like the different graphs that we're given and like just like study those and go over any 